So a while back, I actually bought this graphics card cooler for my 5700 XT, and it was this, the ID Cooling Ice Flow 240 VGA. Um, it was basically an all-in-one for a graphics card. And something that I really liked about it is the fact that it had a lot of vers versatile, I guess you could say, compatibility. So an example would be this thing can not only fit on a 3070, but then it can also fit on a uh, RX 560 which I really like that a lot about this um, graphics card cooler. But I would say the only annoying thing about it had to be the fact that it had a very whiny pump. And then also the fact that, um, I guess you could say the fans, they didn't last too long. And they stopped working for me and I had to replace them with some Corsair fans. But now something else that I really liked about this um, all-in-one pump definitely had to be I guess you could say the cooling efficiency of it. So on my 5700 XT, I would get upwards of 110, 109 Celsius, and I didn't really like that for junction temps. So what I did is I bought this thing, and I put it on my graphics card, of course, and it worked pretty well. It kept it around 75, 80 Celsius, and to be honest, that's a lot better than 110. But I was wondering, if this is able to fit on the 5700 XT, can it fit on the 6700 XT? We're going to be finding that out in today's video. Now the first thing I did was go ahead and take apart the graphics card all the way down to the PCB. Next, I made sure that the retention kit for the 5700 XT fit on this card, and I went ahead and installed it. Now, not gonna lie, having the radiator poke out of the computer like that was super cool, so I just went ahead and left it like that. But I did make sure that it had plenty of airflow, and that the hot air coming out of the radiator was not restricted. So the items that I benchmarked were MSI Combustor, Geeks 3D Firmark, Burn-In Test, Horizon Zero Dawn, Borderlands 3, and just for fun, some Minecraft shaders. All of these tests were recorded for an hour, and here's what I got. To be honest, I really wasn't expecting anything else. Now, the way the cooler performed was honestly amazing. It reminds me of when I first used it about a year ago. Keeping the graphics card temperatures down is literally exactly what I want. I just wish that there was a reliable way to maybe cool down the VRAM or the power delivery. But apart from that, no longer will I be cooking breakfast on my graphics card. So if you guys enjoyed my video, go ahead and leave a like, dislike if you didn't, and a comment down below what you guys thought about the cooler. Do you guys think it really performed well, or do you think there's better things out, out there? Go ahead and give me your opinion, and I'll see you guys in the next video.